Christ prayed so that we must pray also. Prayer changes things. But prayer changes the prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mm. Prayer affects things. <laughs> but it first affects the one who's praying. Your mind ought to be in tune with the Father's as you petition for anything. For if you believe that he's able, you've got to pray with conviction, knowing that God will hear and answer your prayer. Amen. Dr. T. Buckley, the distinguished mental specialist, addressed the British Medical Professional Association in these words as an alienist and one whose whole life has been concerned with sufferings of the mind. I would state that of all the hygienic measures to counteract disturbed sleep, depressions of spirit, and all the miserable sequels of a disturbed mind, I would undoubtedly give first place to the simple habit of prayer. Whatever's going wrong with you, you ought to be able to pray about it. Talk to me somebody. Sin is always around, isn't it? But the Lord has given you an out so that you don't have to get bogged down in sin. Amen, y'all. He has given you a will that if it's entrusted to him, he'll control it. But that involves knowing him well enough to trust him. The old song used to say, if you trust and never die, he will surely bring you out. Take your burden to the Lord and leave it there. Do I have some witnesses? I'm a living witness that he will hear and he will answer your prayer. And I, I've seen people who used to be divided when they pray together. They join forces and become a strong advocate for a prayer life. And one of the best prayers in the universe is, Lord, have mercy. Amen. You ought to believe that God is able to deliver you from the bondage of sin. What about it, Hebrew boys? Yeah. yeah we put that big statue in the plain of Dura. And the demand was that everybody who heard the sound of the music and all of the instruments thereof, when they heard it, to bow down and worship the statue, that golden image put up by Nebuchadnezzar. And these boys had been entrusted with land property that belonged to the king. And the entrapment that the folks around had for them went to work. We're going to get these Hebrew boys because they don't serve our God and really don't serve our king. We'll get them. So they were watched. And they prayed to God three times a day toward Jerusalem. And the fellows went and told on them. Say, so your boys that you put over everything you got are disobeying the king's order. And, oh, king, live forever. But your decree says anybody who does not bow down and worship will be thrown into a fiery furnace. He did seven times hot. Hot as it can get. And you can't go back on your way. He called the boys in and said, is it true? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you won't bow down? They said, King, live a long time. But we are not going to bow down. 
Because the God we serve yeah. is able yeah. to deliver us yeah. from your burning fiery furnace. Yeah, man. But yeah. if not, yeah. we still ain't gonna bow down. Yeah. So they needed the old furnace up. It was so hot that the men who threw them in suffocated yeah. and fell yeah. dead. But they threw them in. Oh, Neb said, hey, I can't rest. I'm going to take a look. He got down there before he got to the furnace. He said, hey, Shadrach, hey, Shadrach, and Abednego, has your God been able to deliver you as you say? He got close and he looked, he said, what? <laughs> he said, how many did we throw in? Said, we tied them all up and threw them in. King said, but I see four men walking around in the midst of the furnace loose. And the fourth one Looks like the Son of God. He's able to get in the furnace with you. He's able to take the fire and quench the heat. Let the flame burn with no heat. He's able to burn off all your ropes and yet preserve your body.